Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is Sat Chat time. And for those of you who are new here, Sat Chat is just like what it sounds. We chat on Saturday. Saturday chatter day, if you will. Um, so it's been a pretty busy week, not a really productive week. Um, it's been one of those weeks where it's like every time I try, to, <laughs> I try to record anything, like the water pump goes off or there's elephants upstairs or something, it just gets very, very loud. And, uh, and I don't know what to do about it, but it is Friday the 13th as I'm recording this. I always record my sat chats a day or two early. Um, it'd been two days early because of some just craziness, but uh, but today it's actually Friday afternoon, and I am kind of going between uh, my computer and my office and outside. I'm just kind of like trying to multitask. I've got a bunch of um, computer files that I'm rendering, editing and rendering for Critique Club. By the way, this is up in Critique Club. If it's actually, if it's not up right now, it will be, and it is, um, it is a straight watercolor. It's done with the Dr. P.H. Martin Hydrus watercolors here, the liquid watercolors, which doesn't matter what you want to use, honestly. I just hadn't used these in a while, and I thought that uh, I would get these out um, because a, uh, a new friend of mine reminded me of these. I'm like, ooh, I need to... Uh, I need to use these, but more about that later. Um, so anyway, this uh, this actually is just done in watercolor, not mixed media, which it was really, I was kind of like, oh, I, I kind of feel the urge. I feel the urge to put some colored pencil on this, but I didn't. I was thinking I might use Pro Color on top because that's a, a pencil that's really good for reproduction. This is done on hot press paper because um, I know that would be really good for reproduction. And this is going to go on the, um, or I painted it, to go on the box of a brush set that I'm releasing this summer. So more information on that as it gets closer, but um, it's been a really cool process because I've been able to choose the uh, the material that brush hairs are made out of and um, the length of the bristles, the width of the bristles, like the color of the handle and ferrule and everything. It was, it's been very exciting. And, uh, and uh, we went back and forth with a couple different brushes to get them just right. So I'm very excited for that watercolor brush set to come out this summer. Um, but anyway, that was uh, doing the packaging and I thought it might be kind of an interesting critique club lesson to show creating that artwork and um, so I'm editing that that's getting uploaded right now to critique club it actually it should be up by the time sat chat comes out so if you're a member you can check that out and I will do a time lapse of it for sketchbook Sunday tomorrow if you are wanting just to see kind of the the kind of fast-paced <laughs> time lapse of it. Um, but it was kind of fun. It was uh, it would have taken me much less time if I wasn't recording it because um, the water pumps kept going off. I swear it's like quiet. You could hear a pin drop until I turn that camera on and then it's like Grand Central Station upstairs. I don't know what's going on. Oh, but it's been a very busy week. Um, like I mentioned last week in Sat Chat, um, my husband's birthday was coming up, so um, he did enjoy his gifts. I got him a, we talked about the silly gifts that I've gotten him in the past, um, but uh, oh, another artist actually uh, actually posted that she uses the magnetic wristlet to hold her palette when she's playing her painting, and she linked up her video on last week's Sat Chat, and I checked it out, it was super clever. Um, so she used it to hold like her metallic watercolor palette. I'm like, that is so clever. I think I'm gonna go have to steal that and uh, liberate it for some art room use. But, um, and a lot of you guys also bought the little gauge. <laughs> The, the gauge, um, contour gauge ruler thing too, so it's funny. It's funny to see what sort of things we buy, isn't it? Uh, and the things that pan out, the things that don't pan out. So for my, for this year, I got my husband uh, something that he wanted. It was a, um, it was a rechargeable USB lighter that um, was waterproof. So that's something he had it on his wish list. It was sold out at Christmas time. So as soon as I saw it come back in stock, I ordered that for him. And I got these um, these clamps because handyman can never have too many clamps. These were corner clamps. And I thought, there must be some situation. Have you ever tried to clamp an awkward corner or frame? <laughs> well, here's an invention for you. I'm sure that's what it was. I'm sure I saw something like, I'm sure he has had trouble clamping a corner or frame before I need to get him that. Uh, not that I like wanted to make more frames for me or anything, because I hope he didn't think that. But I just thought, yeah, that's that would be hard to clamp. It'd be hard to clamp a corner. Actually, um, I uh, I just um, oh we'll get into this. But actually, I might actually have use for that. I that I just broke something the other day that I think I could use that to uh, glue up. So I think it'll be a very very useful tool. Of course, they have the strap clamps. So I don't know. Maybe it's not, but. Boy, it looked good. It looked good in the in the video. 
<laughs> you ever get suckered into things you see on videos? Hey, you're watching my channel. I'm sure you have. Uh, so it's been a busy week. Um, so Mother's Day was Sunday last week, and we had a really low-key day. Honestly, I did not want to go anywhere. I, I just wanted to hang out at home, and um, Lila surprised me with vegan donuts. There's a vegan donut shop in Bangor, and actually this weekend they have the lemon curd donuts, and I really want to try one of those because they look so good. And I love lemon, lemon and vanilla. Um, and so she got uh, a raspberry cream chocolate one and a toasted coconut chocolate one for me. So that was cool because that's a treat, vegan donuts. I mean, like, I'm I'm kind of too lazy to go down there on the weekend and, and stand in line and, and buy a donut, but I'm like, hey, someone must bring me a donut. That's a pretty good treat. And um, Jason brought home, uh, I, I like Pizza Hut pizza. Um, the pan pizza crust is vegan and so I get that without the uh, without cheese obviously with vegetables and I don't know I like that I like that crust certainly not the healthiest thing in the world but um, but yeah we got that for dinner didn't have to leave the house it was so delightful and uh, well Saturday we went up to Presque Isle oh this is cool so if you're ever in Maine if you if you ever find yourself up north in Maine I don't know how why you would find yourself up north in Maine but if you do um, there's a cool thing so we're driving we're driving up to Presque Isle and I see a planet on top of a post and I'm like that looks like a planet huh and we drive a little while lo a little while longer and I see another planet up on a post and I'm like I and then like in the back of my mind I'm thinking I think I heard something about some like solar system replica so I got on my smartphone and I looked it up and sure enough there is the largest scale replica of the solar system in like the northern hemisphere in Presque Isle, Maine. Well, it starts in Presque Isle. I guess the sun's at the University of Presque Isle, which, um, University of Maine Presque Isle, which I didn't see. We drove by it, but I did not see the sun. I would think the sun to scale, you'd be able to see it driving by, but anyway, I don't know where they're hiding that thing because it's supposed to be there somewhere. But then um, it's all to, to scale, and it stretches 100 miles down Route 1. So if you're fancy in a drive in Maine, you can start on the coast and then drive up into potato country and see the whole solar system. Um, maybe not when gas is five fifty a gallon, but uh, what is it now? I don't know. Maybe it's not even $5. It's been high. It's crazy. But maybe not when gas prices are this high, but sometime you might want to take that drive and, and see that. Uh, but we had to go to Presque Isle for softball games. There was a double header up there. Uh, it was nice weather. It was cold though. But um, it did start to work on my tan so I can wear a white shirt and not completely disappear because I'm so pasty. So that's nice. Got, to, got the tan, the tan going. I had to go buy sunscreen because I'd run out of my uh, Olive Ole Complete um, quite a while ago. And it didn't matter because I live in Maine and we don't get sun up here. It's far from the equator. But now it's like, okay, I'm spending time outside. I got to get my sunscreen. I don't want to get all wrinkly and cancery and stuff. So uh, so I did that. And then um, my sister had texted me and she said that... Um, she wanted to take mom out to the, one of the, the, there was a big antiques mall that we go to on Mother's Day usually down in Brunswick and that's what we were planning to do. So, um, so I got up bright and early, went down to, uh, meet Bri at mom's house and we actually went to the Fairfield Antiques Mall and I'd never been there. I'm not, I'm not one to go antiquing. I'm, I hate shopping. I gotta tell you, I do not like shopping. That's why I look like a sketchy hobo all the time because my idea of shopping for clothes is honestly, I look through the bags my girls are going to donate to Goodwill before they go and I see is there anything that fits me that doesn't look horrible so and that's my shopping because I hate shopping I really do although if I have to go on like a a work trip or something like that then I will go usually to like TJ Maxx or Burlington or something like that and just be like okay I need some shirts I've got like two pairs of pants I don't have paint on them a black pair and a charcoal gray pair those are my those are my fancy pants <laughs> I got my fancy pants on. Um, so I have two pairs of pants that don't have paint on them. And um, and I either like pillage my daughter's closet or I go to like TJ Maxx in Burlington every few years and I get a few new tops. Um, so yeah, I hate shopping, especially clothes shopping because you never want to go and try it. I have to try and clothes. I'm going to buy clothes. I want to try them on to make sure they fit so I don't shop online. Um, shoes especially. I have to go in twice a year and get new sneakers because I walk a lot. And I have to try them on because I'm very picky about um, about sneakers. I'm not picky about much, but I am picky about sneakers. And if I'm going to buy clothes brand new, I want to make, or even if I'm going to a thrift store, I want to try them on because I want, uh, not for sneakers, but for like, uh, because I wear shoes out, so I get them new. Um, but like, even if I'm buying like a dress or something at a thrift store, I'm not going to buy it if I can't try it on because I hate returning. If there's anything I hate worse than shopping, it's taking things back to return them. What a hassle, you know, it's such a drag. Um, so I, yeah, I absolutely hate shopping. Uh, so when I do shop, I usually go to Burlington or TJ Maxx because I know there's a good chance I will be able to find a couple shirts I don't hate. 
and um, and it's like I don't want to dress fancy down here. I'm in paint. I get paint on me. These pants I have on, which actually were my sister's. I think <laughs> when she was doing a closet clean out to give me a couple pairs of jeans. I'm like, oh, that was just fun. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so it's like I'm such a hobo. I my my sister will like you want these before she takes them to Goodwill. My daughter's mom, you want any of this stuff before it goes to Goodwill? I mean, hey, I might have bought it to begin with, so <laughs> I might as well get full use out of it. Um, but yeah, it's like as soon as my girls were old enough to shop, do their back to school shopping by themselves, I just handed them cash. Well, they had their driver's license. Here's some cash, kids. I trust you. Go buy some clothes that you will wear. Because honestly, sometimes it's a struggle to shop with your kids because you see stuff and your styles are very different. You see something and you're like, that is total garbage, you know. Uh, but my girls go to a school that has a dress code, so, you know, they can't buy complete awful things. So, and I don't think they would anyway. They're pretty modest. But, um... But yeah, man, when they had the driver's license, I could just give them money and be like, go buy your back to school clothes. That was just like, mwah, perfection. And when my son got his license, it's like, here you go, kid. You know, <laughs> go, do, go do your back to school shopping. I trust you. And then it gives them a little chance to like, um, uh, you know, to compare prices. And because it's not, you know, you don't have your mother there with her like never ending credit card or whatever. You know, it's like they got a budget. So they got to make sure they're picking exactly what they're going to wear. So, so I think it's good resp responsibility, you know, good responsibility if you can do it. I mean, oh, that's a privilege. That's a privilege. Not everybody can do that. But um, but if you can, I think it does teach them a good uh, amount of responsibility and um, it gets you out of shopping, which is <laughs> lazy parenting 101. Pick your battles. You know, there are some things I will be very uh, very stern about, and there are other things where it's like, you gotta let them, you gotta let them, you know, you just gotta let them. So, where were we going with this? Oh, so what else did we this week? So I went to the Fairfield Antiques Mall and um, looked at so many things, five floors of antiques. I got three books on three, um, oh man, watercolor books from like the 70s and 80s. They were so good, even into the 90s. You know, so much information. And what I really like about like old art tutorial books is that a lot of um, techniques kind of fall out of favor. Even color palettes fall out, of, fall out of favor. And I love seeing like a watercolor book from like the 80s because it will use a palette that I used when I started watercoloring in like 1980, which was um, Alizarin Crimson, Cad Red, Cad Yellow Pale, Cad Yellow Deep, or New Gamboge. Um, Prussian Blue. Nobody uses Prussian Blue anymore, it seems like, because there's more light fast alternatives and ultramarine. And it's just so, it gives me the feels to see that, like, really tried and true palette. I was teaching with those colors um, up until about 2000. Actually, probably up until I really got into pigments and stuff being on YouTube and, you know, rather than painting, why don't I waste my time? Well, I don't say waste my time, but, you know, you can get so caught up in the minutia of paint and what the paint is made out of rather than just painting, for goodness sake. Just painting. That's what's going to make you a better painter, not knowing about every single pigment. It is good to know about the pigments so your work doesn't fade away. But honestly, sometimes I think with myself, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say for anybody else, but I can say for myself, sometimes I waste time. I procrastinate by learning about pigments. I procrastinate by like investigating paper and doing this. And yeah, that's kind of important. It's important for what I do for work, but um, honestly, a lot of that's because I'm not feeling inspired and I don't have a good idea to paint. And so I'm just like swatching and puttering and, you know, I'm, I'm procrastinating. I'm, pro I'm down in the weeds. Does it matter? Probably not. You know, I mean, it's good to, it's good to learn stuff. Totally. Uh, speaking of being good to learn stuff, there was a study done on nuns who had donated their, like, their brains to science after they passed. And um, these nuns had kept, they always kept themselves busy with, like, doing puzzles and learning new languages and always learning new information, not just recalling old information, like crossword puzzles. You, rec you recall, uh, recall old information, learning new things. They were learning new things. And um, so after they passed, they did, like, um, like an autopsy on their brains to see uh, like how their like because they're lifelong learners to see how their brains had had um, developed or atrophied or whatnot, and some of the nuns that their brains had signs of dementia and Alzheimer's did not lose cognitive ability in their day-to-day -day lives. They were able to stay sharp because they kept their brains exercised, even though their brains had started to deteriorate with Alzheimer's. So it's just, it just shows you that that lifelong learning really does wonderful things for your, for your brain. So if there's any sort of excuse to like not take on a new hobby or not learn something new, there's a really good reason to do it. You're not wasting time. You're not wasting energy. It's not for nothing. You're keeping your brain supple and agile so you can counteract 
cognitive loss, even if it's genetically there and it's actually happening, you can prevent it to an extent, which I think is just amazing, you know? I mean, that we have that sort of control because there's so many depressing studies out about health and the current state of our world and our planet that it's nice to hear something that we actually have some control over. We have a lot of control. I mean, what, the number one killer is heart disease, is a heart attack, right? I mean, we have we can prevent a lot of that. We can prevent a lot of, um, uh, a lot of early deaths and illnesses and things like that. But um, I just read, what was it? I saw a video and it was, um, uh, I watch a lot of uh, science videos. I know it's kind of. I don't watch very many art videos, ironically. I watch a lot of science videos, and um, and things like that, and politics. I know. I know. For somebody so like uh, <laughs> tries to be, <laughs> he tries to be upbeat all the time. I probably shouldn't watch all that stuff. But anyway, um, there was a study on on um, CO two in the environment and how plants grow in agriculture and because a lot of a lot of people assume that with more CO2 in the air plants will grow better and we'll be able to have more yield from our crops but um, that's not necessarily true because then there could be droughts and even though it's getting warmer in some parts of the world like closer to the poles um, a lot of that area won't really be farmable because of the droughts but anyway that's not even the worst of it. The worst of it is that like our like um, rice has less protein in it and less trace minerals than it did 50 years ago. Wheat has less protein and trace minerals. Our vegetables have less cal like iron, calcium, vitamin C, vitamin A. Uh, it's like all of these these foods that we're eating, these healthy foods, are actually turning into more junky foods because their nutrition has been diluted either from more, they were saying it was for more CO2 in the air, but I would just imagine that just multi-monocropping um, would do that too, because you're depleting all the same nutrients out of the soil all the time. And I know like my dad, uh, they have quite a bit of land, and it's farmland because he was, um, his parents were farmers. He didn't want to be a farmer, but his parents were farmers, so they had farmland. And um, they would rotate crops, and so... He, you know, my parents kept the land, but they weren't, they didn't farm, so they would lease out the, um, they would lease out the pastures. For quite a while, they would lease it out to dairy farmers to, to graze their cows. Um, but then, and they'd grow like um, corn, like cow corn usually. And, um, but dad would make them rotate the crops. Like he wouldn't let them grow corn forever and ever. They'd have to grow something else so that it didn't kill the soil. But I don't think that these big agribusinesses are doing that because, um, you know, they're just like, you know, they're just going to pump out whatever is, you know, whatever is selling. They're going to pump out the corn for ethanol. They're going to pump out the soybeans for everything is made with soybeans now. And I say that as a vegetarian who does eat like tofu. And what the heck is the deal with tofu and soy milk? I can't find the extra firm tofu at the grocery store. It's been out for like three weeks, except for the expensive brand. But like, I just like the, you know, Hannaford brand, Nature's Choice, Nature's whatever, organic tofu. This is usually like two bucks a block. It's been like out for like a month. Um just finally was able to get a carton of soy milk at the grocery store. That's been out. But they have like, you know, almond milk and oat milk and all these other milks for days. It's like, come on, can we just, can we just, can we just handle the basics before we start getting fancy with extra creamy oat, almond stuff? I mean, come on, let's, can we, we know there's plenty of soybeans. Can we just get the soy milk situation? Or I'm gonna have to make my own. I actually have a soy bella soy making, soy milk maker, which that was one of those inventions. I'm like, I gotta have one of these. I am so sick of spending top dollar for soy milk. I'm gonna make my own soy milk and make my own tofu and make my own rice milk. And um, that did not last long. It lasted for a while, but I could never get the results. I could never get a really creamy soy milk. It was kind of like you took, you know, silk soy milk and you watered it down and threw in a handful of sand. That's kind of like what my results were with the soy bella machine. But maybe I'll try it again because man, the soy milk shortage is really getting me down. Um, and so what else did I do this week? I did go to the grocery store. Before I went to the grocery store, though, I met another YouTuber. Uh, so this is funny. So um, this is a YouTube channel, Clark Fine Art, Angela Clark. She actually is about an hour away from me. And uh, she had messaged me on Instagram a couple weeks ago. She was asking me about the jelly cup washes. And... Um, and what the difference was, because she was like, there's kind of a big price difference between some different brands, and she had seen one that looked like the Maya gouache, and she didn't know, she was just wondering if I thought they were the same or not, because she wanted to try some, but she didn't want to, you know, buy the really expensive ones if the other ones were the same exact thing, which I can't blame her. And um, so we're talking, I'm like, I think they're all pretty much the same, but I had just gotten a new Maya set into review, and, um, and I'd had some previous versions of it, and I'm like, 
tell you what, you live local. Why don't you just take my original set because I've got this new one to review. I'm never going to get through it. So you can just have this and then, you know, use it up if you like it, then you can buy more. Um, so I'm like, next time you're going to be in the Bangor area, let me know. I'll zip in and, and make the exchange, making some sketchy gouache exchanges in the Dollar Tree parking lot, friends. I get a trench coat. <laughs> Want some jelly wash? Uh, yeah, so super sketchy. No, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, her husband probably thinks that I'm like, you know, gonna kidnap her. I don't know. But anyway, so uh, so we met up at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> Keeping it classy, friends. Keeping it on brand. And um, and so she was so sweet. She um, made me this, like, uh, this, I can't remember what brand she said the water was, like, Go or Goal or something. I don't buy water because we have a well and the water's really good and we have a filtration system and stuff, so I just, I always just fill my own water bottle, but she took a Powerade bottle, and then I guess this Go water that she buys has these big cups like this, kind of like a, and you could probably use, like, the measuring cap on, like, um, detergent or something, um, and I used to get, like, those little, when I used to teach art camps, we used to buy this, like, lemonade and iced tea and stuff that had a container and that lid was a measuring thing and um, we used to save those for water buckets because it was like two uh, and then like if I was plenty of painting I would just shove my like brushes and things like that in the thing and screw the cap on take it with me but anyway uh, that's neither here nor there this is kind of cool so it's got a little cap that you can use for mixing and there's little ridges in there that you can clean your brush off of oh and look at that I can actually I could just keep the cap in there if I wanted to but anyway so um, she gave me two she made two this one I think is the actual water bottle and this one she stuck a a little mini pink puck in there and I thought that is the most clever thing that's adorable I love I love ways to repurpose stuff for plein air painting you know me and so then we decided we would roam around the Dollar Tree because why not we're both there you know, we've made our crafty exchange actually um, we we're talking about bee watercolor paper and sh and I haven't bought any since um, since remember they sold the company and then you couldn't find it anywhere and I didn't even know you could buy it again and so she had bought some so um she was wondering how the old stuff was if the new stuff compares and I was wondering about the new stuff so I brought her some of my older bee pipe paper that I had and she bought me some of the newer bee paper so we did a little exchange there so I got some bee paper to compare it looks the same like the texture on it looks the same but um so that's kind of fun we'll try that and so then we were in Dollar Tree and I saw this container and I thought this because well actually while I was at the Fairfield Inks Antique Mall, I was um, I was looking for a ceramic divided dish for water like for to have a clean and dirty water container I thought just because I thought it might look nicer on videos than the big paint pucks um, you know or and also upstairs when I'm painting at my desk my cats have taken to drinking my water in mason jars so this has a lid on it so I can cover it up so if I'm using whatever like cadmium in my paint or anything like that I don't have to worry about the cats but look at that so this is three containers I can fill them with water have like dirty medium and clean water and then I could actually pop the lid on that if I was still painting and I wanted to walk away and have to worry about the cat drinking out of it. So I thought that was really cute. It's like a, it's just a little organizer and it was over with like the tools and stuff. And, um, and then Angela had the idea, she said, put a paint puck in there. I'm like, oh my gosh, a big paint puck would totally fit in there. So totally clever idea. See, you get creative people, their, their brains start bouncing things back and forth. It's good stuff. And, um, oh, and then she showed me these and I've done it before. I use like magic erasers for like, I'm basically cleaning up a mistake like if I drop paint in the background of a watercolor that I've just finished usually I do backgrounds like I didn't do a background on this and I'm telling you what actually the first paper I had I spattered when I was getting out my liquid watercolor I spattered it so ah, so aggravating um but anyways so like if you do a white background and you drop some paint you can use a magic eraser to clean it up but she was saying she likes to use the sheets the magic eraser sheets with an eraser shield. I'm like, I never thought to use the magic eraser with an eraser shield, which is a little metal thing. I probably have one right here. And then I had like, I was totally out of context. And I'm like, what's an eraser shield? She's like, you know what an eraser shield is. And you have one. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> I'm like, what's that? I never heard of that door. But anyway, so I'm like, that's a great idea. And I was like, well, I'll just use that with my reg regular magic erasers. But then I thought, well, they're right here. They're a dollar, a dollar 25, I should say, not a dollar anymore. Um, and I couldn't believe Dollar Tree had the sheets. So I grabbed a package of those. I did have some other things that I put back because I'm so, um, <laughs> I'm so responsible. But these little, I also got these little pen case uh case pencil boxes i thought they were such a clever little size and you can do full pans sideways over there and you could lay brushes on top if you want for plein air but what i'll probably end up doing is using these for like gifts or something because i think they're really they're really cute 
and um, you know you could buy some fancy schmancy colored pencils and, and gift them in there and that would be really cute so they'll probably go in the gift stuff and then this is my favorite ham cream it's great if you oil paint because it's actually a nice barrier but I'm telling you why I put this on my hands at night before I go to bed it's creamy petroleum jelly it used to come in a really big container and my hands are pretty soft even my daughters will comment on how soft my hands are and I'm an old lady so Dollar Tree Dollar 25 ain't nothing finer Ain't nothing finer than the China Dina. And I got these clips because I use these all over the place for holding my sketchbooks open. I also have some on my laptop for keeping cords out of the way when I'm live streaming. But so that was fun. So I got to meet another YouTuber. Oh, I didn't tell you the exciting thing about the antiques mall. Um, actually, it was a present from my mom. It was a captain's, uh, captain's desk. And it's a tiny little desk, and I'm gonna put it in the living room. I've got to do some rearranging. I I have been wanting so when I, so Tuesday, my first day home because I've been busy all weekend. Um, I'm like I've got to reset this house. Things are getting out of hand. It's a mess, and I had big plans. I had big plans from like cleaning, dusting, rearranging the furniture, mopping everything, and bringing the new desk in and and finding it a home, and also vacuuming the basement. How many things happened? I kind of dusted. I vacuumed. I mopped. And that was about it. I do have to say that after uh, being sick last week or the week before, I'm just, I just get tired out easier. But I am still, you know, I'm back up to walking the dog three, three miles a day. And I was only, I only like took a couple days off from doing that anyway. Um, but yeah, I do feel like I'm getting a little tired. But I have to say, I feel 20 years younger. I don't know if it's just like the contrast of like having like uh, being sick for a couple days and then you're like, oh, but I was feeling pretty good before too. So um, yeah, I'm just feeling full of life. I'm feeling effervescent. If this is menopause, sign me up. I've enjoyed the free trial and I am ready to commit. If that is the case, I don't know, but it might be. Uh, I, I feel like I've gone through the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the twelve trials of um, of Hercules or whatever, and I finally come through to the to the reward after the years of feeling like I was going to lose my mind every other day. You know, I kind of feel like I'm I'm, I'm to the I'm to the the juicy goodness of life. Uh, so let's hope. I hope that's the case. Um, it's been beautiful weather. It's like, like it's in the eighties right now. I think it's supposed to hit ninety today. I am loving it. I love the hot weather. Of course, I have a hard time buckling down and working when it's really nice outside. Because you remember those like cartoons where like the dog would smell like a roast chicken or something and would like float on the aromas of deliciousness. That's like me when it's sunny out. I float like I'm in the dungeon. I have the bulkhead open. I'm gonna float out to the outdoor world where it's sunny. That's why I have to have the sunscreen because I just I'm addicted. I'm addicted to being outside in the warm weather. But anyway, that's all I really have to talk about today. I'm sure there were other things, but uh, but look at this. It's 27 minutes. I haven't really talked about much, but that's what Sat Chat is. It's just a time to reconnect and uh, chit chat. And I got more things to edit upstairs. So uh, so yeah, I got to bounce back and, and work on that. But let me know what you've been up to in the comments below. I hope you had a good Mother's Day if you're a mom. And even if you're not, I hope you had a good weekend. And uh, yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful week. I hope your weather is good and you're enjoying it. And I hope you have lots of energy and I hope you feel 20 years younger too. Unless you're 20, then you're probably not watching this channel. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.